is some file that we have uh, showing the roundabout out here at Sturdy and Laporte. And so I've already built the model for you because we are short on time at this point. Uh, the model's already built for us, and we're just going to have you do some runs on this. Again, to show you how to do that easier, uh, that's why we made this video. Uh, to look into it, you can see the, uh, the roundabout's already built. We can toggle into network mode. We learned about last time in the introduction piece. Let me toggle back and forth out of that. Um, I've already set up a node, and so to do nodes, you just come down here to nodes, and then as always with this system, you hold down the control key and right click, and you can create a new node. I put one around my roundabout. Okay, this is the area that I want to check. I want to find out information about. It's like an intersection analysis, and so I built this node around it, and I'm going to collect data at this node point inside this box. And actually, you can adjust it for so uh, many meters either side of that box as approaching cars come into it. So it's kind of doing an intersection level analysis, and we're going to run this around this roundabout, and that's going to be our intersection uh, point on that. The simulation is already set up, and you can see the parameters here. So you go up to simulation and then parameters, and the box opens up over here. And this is my simulation parameters. I have it set to be 900 seconds, and that's 15 minutes. And so we're going to do a 15 minute interval. And that matches pretty much what we do for most of our intersections, because we like to break it into 15 minute intervals. Um, the simulation resolution per time step, that's just a kind of a computer based thing about how quickly it, it actually calculates these steps um, versus you know, real time uh, through that wouldn't worry too much about it. Usually the default is simulation set to maximum. I set this one to five just because it'll look smoother. If you see set to maximum, the the little uh, imaginary vehicles jump in and out and, and zoom real fast and slow down. As the computer is doing other things in the background, it'll speed up and slow down the simulation. If you set a factor in here, it should run pretty smooth. So I, I like that it looks smooth. To do that, we're going to use all the cores. We're going to use all the computing, computing power we can get to. Right, do that. So that's the, the setup for that. The other thing we did to do an evaluation was I came into evaluation and did configuration in here. And because I, I, I created a node, I've now come in here and I had to, I had to select node. And then I said over here my interval was 900 seconds. So again, my simulation is set to 900 seconds. The interval at which I am calculating uh, information about my node is at 900 seconds. So everything matches at 15 minutes. I can set this to every second, so then I would have a ton of data, <laughs> second by second, how much delay is happening within the node. That's a little bit crazy. So I set this to 15 minutes as well. And then we can also tell it, do I want to know things about cars, the vehicles in here, about the pedestrian classes? We can change all that if we wanted to, but you know, leave that alone. So just to show you where that is, uh, that's where I found that. So that was under evaluation and my configurations for that. Um, there. So now it, it's all set up and ready to go. I've actually got the, the window open for my simulation runs down here. I want to show you a couple of things. Uh, first, one is how do I get my volumes to come into this? And we look at these in the introductory piece, right? Here's my vehicle input, and there's a vehicle input on every approach. Down here with this vehicle input. And forth. Um, those are already set up, so you don't have to worry about that. But let's look at how to adjust the if I go over here to vehicle input, I can uh, click once with the left button to highlight it. And then I just right click and do show list. And now here, here are my vehicle inputs. And I named all of my links or my inputs down here so I don't um, forget which ones are which. They don't come that way uh, when you first input them. You have to give them a name. I suggest that you do <laughs> because it's a lot easier than to find them later. I also named all of my, my lanes coming in or my routes through there. This is northbound through and left, westbound through and left, <coughs> excuse me, southbound and eastbound through and left. Again, because if you don't name these links, it's really easy to get confused. Here's the total number of vehicles coming in, and this is on a per hourly basis, coming in on uh, each of these approaches. When I click on them, it highlights which approach that is. So if I hadn't named them, I could say, okay, that's westbound. Here's my southbound. Here's my eastbound link, and so forth. So that's that's the total number of vehicles coming in at this point, which is the start of that link. That's where uh, this one likes to attach it to. Now, where are these vehicles going once they've come into my my model? And that is going to be under vehicle routes. I click that. I right click. I click show list. 
And I'm going to show my static list. I only have static ones assigned right here. You can do a lot of fancy stuff we won't have time to get to. I'm going to do static list. Here's my static list. Now let me expand this so you can see the link names. Again, I had to name these. And so here's my northbound. Um, and here is the route that they're going. And I defined all these routes earlier. And now this is just for northbound uh, vehicles. Here's my northbound route. I said this was taking northbound right. And here is the number of vehicles that are admitting in that movement. And for my northbound through NVT, right? Here's the number of vehicles making that movement. Northbound left, NVL, here's the number of vehicles making that movement, 400. Now, if I did this right, mm -hmm. this is 700 total. That should add up to the total number of northbound vehicles that I said were coming in. And then it would be a nice balance. The way Bitson looks at this, this is a relative flow. I can pick any number in here. I can make decimals. I can make everything from 0 to 1 and make it some fraction of the flow is going to determine which way it is. If you know your total incoming volume and you know your volume uh, that you want to model for your turn movement, you can just use those numbers and it'll automatically break it down into the right ratio. And this is really looking at ratios. You can put any number you want in here. It doesn't have to be actual vehicle turning as long as uh, the right proportion of vehicles from one to the other, it'll do it right. It's easier to keep track of if you use the total number of vehicles turning. That's what I find. And so you can go through here and you can see here's my southbound movement. If I click on them, it shows my southbound. Which ones are going where, southbound, left, and so forth. Right. And that'll be key in a moment because as part of the homework, I'm going to ask you to change these values and to see how the roundabout reacts to that. And we're going to run, make runs of this and do that. So this is the initial run. And then again, um, in the homework, you're going to be asked to change the, the mix of turn movements and change the right turns versus the through versus the left bounds or less turns um, for various approaches in various directions of the traffic. And then you're going to run the simulation again and, and compare the data from that. So I'm going to leave this as it is now. This is the base condition. I'll save it just in case I messed anything up. And there we are ready to roll now and we're ready to run a simulation. And we there's um, the simulation, like I say, was set up to be 900 seconds. We've got our vehicle routes in, we've got our vehicle inputs in, and we've got the relative number of um, uh, directional, I guess, turn movements that the vehicles are taking as they come through and round them out. To run the simulation, it's easy, right? You find the play button up here, and we are going to click uh, simulation, and it starts running. And, and it takes a second or two, and then the cars start appearing and running through here. If you have a slower computer, it may be kind of uh, uh, intermittent. It may start and stop and not be very smooth. This is a decent computer, so it's running pretty smooth. This isn't that complicated to model. Hopefully, there won't be any trouble to that. Now, you just have to watch it. <laughs> it's going to run for 900 simulated seconds. This is running at five times normal speed, so it do look really fast. So we, we set that rate to be to run five times faster than normal. And that was in our parameter setup for this. And so once this runs, uh, it'll run a, a simulated 15 minutes. That's good enough. You will you know, prefer to run it for a full hour if you could, but we're just going to run it for 15 minutes. You can see as the vehicles come in and the network becomes more populated, so you start being queued. And we have northbound queued now. And when I hover over this thing, everything freezes for a second. But you can see we've developed northbound queue. The northbound queue will probably clear out at some point. Depends on how many cars are coming in from the from the west. Um, you know, cleared it out, and then you'll see we get queues in other places at other times. It's going to continue to run until it pays until it hits the 900 seconds. You can see where we're at down here at the very bottom here in the bottom over on the left side. That's the that's the simulated time that we're at. And so we are at 415, 420, 430 seconds out of 900. So you can see how much longer you have to wait for that. So we'll give it a little bit here. That's moving pretty quick. Okay, it's going to be uh, to do a 15 minute run at five times normal speed. It should be a three minute uh, process. Assuming your computer can keep up uh, with that. And we're not going to wait for it because we're in a hurry. So we're going to stop it and you can do that. And stop the simulation. You're going to have uh, warning. Uh, when your run, let it finish. Let it go to the 900. For our case, in the interest of time, we're going to move on. So it ran 
vehicle, because I had um, evaluation set up to go, it is collecting data about every little car it drew through here that it was driving through. Now we're going to look at that data that we collected. And so we're going to come up here to evaluation. You're going to do the uh, results list. We can see our simulation runs, how many simulations we had. So here's two. I ran one earlier, and I just ran another one. And you can see how long it ran for. So neither time that I leave it gets finished. When you make a change, if you want to clear out the data you've got, you can just click this, and then you can hit the X, right? And it goes away. And it tells me, oh, you're going to lose all of it. Yeah, it's fine. And so this is, uh, I ran it three times earlier. Those are all gone now. We're only going to see more four. That's fine. That's the one we just ran, and for this purpose, that's good enough. So now we're going to, so that's how to see what ran, and that was under here, under simulation run. Now we're going to check out our node results. We set up a node, we collect the data on the node, so when we go to this results list, we're going to look at node results. There it is. I'm going to expand this bottom window so you can see it better. So we'll expand it even a little more. Okay, there we go. So here is my uh, results from running that data. And simulation number run number four, I deleted everything else. Otherwise, I would have a lot of data in here. If I had three runs, it would be this times three in there. And this tells you per movement, and let me see if I move make it too big. If we click around in here, yep. right, this is showing you for the node, which I named roundabout, so that's why it starts with that coming from the northbound through left lane, going on through this is a dash, it's for going on to eastbound exit, um, and this is the link number six, it's going into network number six, starting from network number one, it goes in order through that. You can see it's telling me what my level of service is. It tells me how many, how many simulated vehicles made that uh, movement and did that lift through there, and then it gives me my level of service. Uh, for the amount of time I let it run. And so it's averaging all the delay. Here's my delay per vehicle. This is average delay per vehicle in seconds. As we go through. Here's that. So you can see this one was a kind of a high delay, right? And I got a, a corresponding level of service C. And, and so forth. And then down here at the bottom one, this is the good one, this is line 20 in our case, is um, roundabout and there's nothing after it. This is the summary of all of the delay for the entire roundabout. And so this is, we had 295 total vehicles drive through the roundabout. I have a level service B through that. Here is my average delay for every vehicle that came through and every movement they went through. And if you want to know how many, how much emissions we created, right? Here's our carbon monoxide, here's our NOx, um, here's fuel consumption. So we could compare that and here's um, here's our level service value, here's our vehicle delay again, um, here's our stop delay, so this is all delay, just slowing down and stopping, here is just stop delay, here's the total number of stops per vehicle, how many vehicles on average, how many times did each vehicle have to come to a complete stop, slowing down didn't count, so on average um, vehicles uh, come to 0.83 complete stops as they drive through, so some stop and a lot of them don't. And that's, so that's how we're reading this. So this is the good information. This is what we want to know about our delay. We're going to make these runs, then we're going to adjust our volumes, and then we're going to do another run and we're going to compare it. And we're going to see how much delay it causes. And that's how we can do a comparison of how good maybe this roundabout setup is, versus if we added some lanes, we could run it again and see if we improve, hopefully not hurt, our delay and check through that. So that's where this is. How do we use this data? Well, let's grab this data. Right through here, you can copy it. So I'm just going to copy all that data. And we'll flash there. I'm going to grab Excel, bring it over here, and so I copied it. And I'm just going to hit Control V for paste, right? And it pastes it in. And so there's all your data now. Now you've got it in Excel, and if you want to do more information, you know, break it down more, uh, you can. Interesting pieces in here. Again, it's the same as we just saw on the other table. But if you've got a problem approach, you can figure out which approach is your biggest problem. Number one, you can look for your level of service, so you can also just look at what's your delay, what's your delay value. And so here we can see that the northbound through left lane coming in, um, headed to the westbound exit, which would be the left turn, right? 
is it has a really high delay. Well, we expect um, left turns to have a high delay in a roundabout situation, one of the larger delays. Through there, in particular, that northbound one's being cut off by people coming in from the eastbound uh, movement through there. But overall, it's a pretty good level of service. Now, these levels of service will drop probably as we, if we were to run it to the full 900 seconds, and you will, <laughs> you'll get to run it to the full 900 seconds. Right, if I were to, I'll move this out of the way. If I were to run this two more times, let's say we did three runs, it will show you each run. It will show you um, run one, two, and three, or in our case, we started at four because I had some before. It'd be four, five, and six. And then below that, it will show you the minimum, it will show you the maximum, and it will show you the average for all the runs. And so it, it aggregates all the runs you do into um, single results. And that's normally how we use this. We don't use a single run. We'll run it multiple times. And we'll take the average values from all, all of those runs uh, and use those values. Right. And here's the again the summary statistic for the roundabout. If we ran it three times, we'd have a summary statistic based on all three runs. And it's called average uh, down here. And that's what we're probably going to look at. That's the more important values in the real world. That's the ones you're going to use. Right? We're not going to just because we have statistical variation. It does a random seed starting value for how many cars it puts on the network to start with. Well, we'll run it through and it does different random uh, starts to it and we'll get different results each time. It's not an, uh, perfect, it's not an exact duplicate each time you run it. That's an interesting piece there. Um, that should be enough to, to get you going, right? Um, you can also save these these things that save it in ATP file. I'm not even sure what that is. I would just copy, sorry, I didn't sort. I would just copy and then paste it in Excel if you want to get the data out of there uh, through that. Right. Um, that should be the basics. Again, you're going to come back here to vehicle route static, right click, show list, static, and then here's the route when you want to change the values for that. Right. Here's how you can, you can get into them. And then you can change the turn movement volume for each one. Get in there. I think that's maybe the key piece uh, for upcoming homework. Hope this helps.